Trapcast Express. Tradcast Express, it's Thursday, May 11th, 2017. Breaking news about the Society of St. Pius X. This past Sunday, seven senior clerics in the French district of the SSPX read from the pulpit an open letter addressed to the faithful in which they warn against the Vatican's maneuver permitting SSPX priests to officiate at marriages under certain conditions. In addition, the open letter speaks out against any attempts at reconciliation with the current Vatican administration, accusing Francis and his henchmen of constituting a modernist occupation from which they pray the church will be delivered. Well, with all that, it won't surprise you to hear that Father Christian Bouchacour, the SSPX District Superior of France, announced today that the seven priests in question, who were the heads of French deaneries, have been relieved of their positions. Bouchacour furthermore denounced the seven deans for their mode of operating, saying they disseminated their declaration in a subversive manner and prepared it in secret in order to surprise, destabilize, and place before the superiors an accomplished fact with the effect of taking the faithful hostage and constituting them judges of their own priests and superiors." which is basically what the SSPX does with the Vatican, but that's another story. Well, we've got all that for you in our latest blog post, dated May 11th, entitled Trouble in SSPX French District. Seven deans rebel, get removed from their positions. Take a look at it at our Novus Ordo Wire blog at novusordowatch.org slash wire. Then uh, what else do we have? Uh, a few things. Oh, but, but before we get to that, real quick, I need to announce that we have new donor incentives for you for the month of May. In a nutshell, if during the month of May you make a donation of a particular amount, and we have uh, different tiers available, we will send you a gift, a reward for doing so as part of our big annual fund drive. We have great gifts lined up for you, including the following books, My Daily Bread, a traditional Catholic daily devotional, The Sinner's Guide, which is a great manual to get you to stop sinning. Uh, then we have the out-of-print book, The Church Teaches, Documents of the Church in English Translation as well as an entire eight-volume set of dogmatic theology in English called Sacre Theologiae Summa, a summary of sacred theology by various Jesuit authors published first in Latin in the mid-1950s. Aside from that, and this month only, we also offer you either a season pass or a full annual membership to True Restoration, the traditional Catholic radio program at truerestoration.org. So we're really going out of our way here to offer you something in exchange for your tax-deductible contribution. So just go ahead and check it out and uh, read all about it at novosordowatch.org slash donate. But now back to the good stuff. Go out and listen. That was part of Francis's advice regarding how to evangelize which he gave during a homily at the Vatican on April 5th. He said, quote, All men, all women have a restlessness in their hearts, good or bad, but there is a restlessness. Listen to that restlessness. It's not saying go out and proselytize. No, no, go and listen. Listening is the second step. The first, get up and go. The second, listen. That ability to listen. What do people feel? What does the heart of the people feel? What does it think? But do they think mistaken things? But I want to hear these mistaken things in order to understand where the restlessness is. We all have this restlessness within. The second step for the church is to find the restlessness of the people. Unquote. Now, listening is, if I'm not mistaken, it's kind of the opposite of preaching, isn't it? 
anyway, we can just leave it at that. This was typical Francis Blather from the Casa Santa Marta, April 5th. Oh, and then just today, May 11th, Francis once again attacked the Catholic Church and made up a new mortal sin, the death penalty. Let me quote from a report found on Crux Now. Dot com. Quote, faith is a journey guided by the Holy Spirit who helps the church grow in understanding the sinful nature of once accepted practices like slavery and the death penalty, Pope Francis said. While people once even used religious reasons to justify practices such as slavery, the death penalty, and wars of religion, over time, the Holy Spirit has deepened the Church's understanding of the gospel, the Pope said May 11th in his homily during the morning Mass at Domus Sancte Marte. Slavery is a mortal sin. Today we say this. Back then, some would say that this could be done because these people did not have a soul, he said. The number of people enslaved today is even more, but at least we know that it is a mortal sin. The same goes for the death penalty. For a time, it was normal. Today, we say that the death penalty is inadmissible, unquote. Folks, this is nothing but a bunch of baloney. First, it is not true to say that the Catholic Church ever condoned slavery. From the beginning, the Church has upheld the human dignity of slaves and worked for their emancipation. Secondly, wars of religion are not wrong per se, as we can see from the Crusades, for example. But of course Francis has to say all that, else he can't make his point, which is, the Church can change her teaching and declare something to be a mortal sin that was formally declared to be just fine. Latest example, according to him, the death penalty. Yeah, well... Francis' claim that the Holy Ghost is deepening the Church's understanding of the Gospel in this way is false, because although doctrine can develop, it can never end up meaning the opposite of what it once meant. So, to say, as Francis does today, that administering the death penalty is a mortal sin is not a development of the Church's traditional teaching as found, for example, in the Catechism of Trent which states the exact opposite. Let me quote from that. Quote, Another kind of lawful slaying belongs to the civil authorities to whom is entrusted power of life and death by the legal and judicious exercise of which they punish the guilty and protect the innocent. The just use of this power, far from involving the crime of murder, is an act of paramount obedience to this commandment which prohibits murder. The end of the commandment is the preservation and security of human life. Now, the punishments inflicted by the civil authority, which is the legitimate avenger of crime, naturally tend to this end, since they give security to life by repressing outrage and violence. Hence these words of David, In the morning I put to death all the wicked of the land, that I might cut off all the workers of iniquity from the city of the Lord. Unquote. That's from the Catechism of the Council of Trent, also known as the Roman Catechism under the fifth commandment, thou shalt not kill. So this is the exact opposite of what Francis said. He can't say that, uh, you know, capital punishment is a mortal sin when uh, the true teaching is that uh, far from involving the crime of murder, it is an act of paramount obedience to the fifth commandment. So, Something that is a mortal sin can also at the same time be an act of paramount obedience to the commandment, okay? So Francis is once again talking BS, okay? And I don't mean Barbara Streisand. By the way, what happened to, you know, accompaniment, discernment, and all that jazz found in Amoris Laetitia? How come that always only applies to sins against the Sixth and Ninth Commandments? What about other sins? Why can't we get some leeway there? You know, something about concrete situations or, or, or something. No, instead, Francis all of a sudden denounces something quite rigidly as a mortal sin. Just like that. And what he's denouncing so mercilessly isn't even a sin to boot. It's, as we just heard, an act of obedience 
to the fifth commandment. So what do we have here? Up is down, left is right, right is wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, the Vatican II sect has turned Catholicism on its head, and someone needs to point it out. That's what we're here to do. You're welcome. Tradcast Express is a production of Novos Ordo Watch. Check us out at tradcast.org, and if you like what we're doing, please consider making a tax-deductible contribution at novosordowatch.org slash donate.